Okay, in this question, Summer 17, Paper 4.2, you are first asked to briefly, briefly describe two phenomena associated with the photoelectric effect that cannot be explained using the wave theory of light. Another way to phrase it would be to show that the photons are discrete energy. This is the quantum theory, okay? That light are particles, quantum theory. All right, so I guess uh, there are many ways to write this and just a, just a point here to make for you who are about to sit for exam. Whenever there is point form like this, please list only two. Don't go and lebe lebe, go and do so extra and go and write four. And then if let's say some of it is wrong, marks will be deducted. So write two that you are very sure of. For example, I can say that the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electron or emitted photoelectron depends on frequency of the incident photon of the light. Now good enough already. Uh, the easiest one to write, I'll write for you. Uh, instantaneous or instant emission. Emission of photoelectron once light is incident on metal surface. Don't need to wait. You shine the light on the metal surface, the electron excitedly come and say hi to you. You shine the light, the electron go ja, come out with you, instantaneous. All right, other things that you can write includes uh, the existence of threshold frequency. I'll, I'll write down other things that they will accept. So you could say, number three, there is a frequency below which no electron is emitted. Okay, and number four is sort of related to number one, so I'm going to write beside here. Okay, that the fourth one that you could possibly write would be the maximum Ke of electron doesn't depend on intensity or is not affected by intensity. Intensity of light, if you want to make the sentence a bit more full. Okay, part B. There is uh, the maximum energy Emax of electron emitted from a metal surface when illuminated by a light of wavelength lambda is given by this expression. Identify the symbol lambda naught. So whenever you see a naught or a zero underneath, this is known as the threshold value. So this is the threshold wavelength. Okay, or if you fancy, you can actually define threshold wavelength. There will be the maximum wavelength for emission of photoelectrons, above which no electrons is emitted. The maximum allowed or the maximum possible wavelength. All right, and then they gave you a beautiful graph like this, and then they ask you to, from the graph, determine the magnitude of lambda naught, what's the threshold wavelength, and also use the gradient to determine the Planck constant. Okay, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to do some modification on the equation. So let me copy this here first. Okay, then I can, so I can bring this down. I want to point out here that right now, your graph or your y-axis is maximum energy, your x-axis is 1 over lambda. So equation of a straight line, I'm going to open up the bracket first. E max is equal to hc over lambda minus hc over lambda naught. In fact, I'm just going to hc bracket 1 over lambda. Ah, okay, yeah. All right, let's go. So this one is y-intercept. This one is m. This is x plus c. Okay. So double check. Your y-axis is e max. Your x-axis is 1 over lambda. Okay. So from here, I can pretty much tell that the gradient is equal to hc 
the y intercept is hc over lambda naught but this graph are oh, very annoying there is no place for y intercept right so if i extrapolate the graph i can't have a y intercept the best i can have is an x intercept right the best i mean the best thing i can do is i can put your ruler and i can put my ruler and sort of like make the line a bit longer I like that no? i can only have an x intercept so maybe i want to see what kind of x intercept should i have so at the x intercept the y will be zero so e max is equal to zero so i'm going to put zero here zero is equal to hc over lambda minus hc over lambda naught. okay so by rearranging this i will have hc over lambda is equal to hc over lambda naught or in other words right the x intercept one is one over lambda one over lambda is actually one over lambda naught so the value that i have here this one is 1 over lambda naught this x intercept here okay so you can also use logic what i mean there is a thing that sometimes students are i guess not very intuitive to use which is here at this point the electron has no more energy And what that means to the graph is, at this point, all energy is used to escape the metal surface. If all energy is used to escape the metal surface, then this intercept, x-intercept, is a correspondence to 1 over lambda naught because your lambda naught is your threshold frequency, threshold wavelength. The largest possible lambda otherwise no electron will come out so this one is when the electron or is really no energy already use up all the energy to escape okay so that means whatever energy that is left is the work function you can use it look at it that way as well you can also look at it this way this one is the x-axis so this is the x-intercept whichever works for your brain okay but regardless all i need to do is to read this graph so 1 over lambda naught is equivalent to 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 6 so i can just press my calculator to find a you no know, not negative 6 huh? 10 to the power of 6 what lambda naught is so 1 over 2.4 times 10 to the power of 6 this will be 4.2 times 10 to the power negative 7. Um, when you do physics, right, especially at this level, you should have enough experience with yourself to know, hey, my strength, my strength by my strength means Miss Lee, my strength is that I'm very confident to manipulate equation and find equation of a straight line so i don't memorize one i don't go memorize the y-intercept of this graph is that the y-intercept of that graph is that the x-intercept of this graph is that because they can keep changing the axis la, and i don't want to memorize i i want to be able to look at the axis look at the equation and do the necessary adjustment okay trusting that the question will give me enough context all right next find the value of plan constant definitely we're going to use gradient okay so from here gradient is equal to hc so i'm going to use that part here let me zoom in a bit more for the people gradient is equal to hc so we're going to use the gradient in the graph so i guess i have a coordinate here 2.4 maybe i'll just take this coordinate here 3.0 3.0 okay this one here is four boxes so 3.67 is it 2.4 a wait it's not 2.4 mm, 2.4 is here this is 2.1 2.2 4 yes my bad 2.2 so 
So part of knowing oneself is also knowing that I am also the kind that will rush to answer a question and then write the wrong answer. Happened to me many times. So I always finish my paper early so I can go back and double check. I write answers in 2SF, okay? So this one is 4.5. Anyway, regardless, let me put in the coordinate. This will be 3.6, 3.7. And then this one would be 3.0. Just to help my brain a bit, this would be 2.1, 2.2, comma, 0. Okay. So I will take the y, which is 3.0 minus 0, divided by the x, uh, 3.7 minus 2.2. But before I proceed, let me double check whether there is prefix. At the y-axis, there is negative 19. So times 10 to the power of negative 19. At the x-axis, there is 10 to the power of 6. Times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, we're looking for Planck constant and we definitely have the speed of light available to us. So for me, I prefer to find the gradient first lah, because I know that the mark scheme will have a mark for the correct calculation for gradient and I want to get that mark first, just in case I make some careless mistake here and there. So I have, for me, 2.0 times 10 to the power negative 25 is hash. 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8. Then I can calculate my h, that will be 6.7 or 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 34. Okay, so these three marks, right? One mark is when you identify gradient is hc, c1. One mark is when you calculate the gradient, c1. I know you, they allow direct substitution into the equation, but calculating the gradient is always the safer way to go, in my opinion. All right, and then everything else would be A1. So that would be your answer. 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 34. Okay, part C. The metal surface in B becomes oxidized and the photoelectric emission is observed, but the work function energy is increased. So I need more energy to escape the metal surface. On figure 10.1, draw a line to show the variation of 1 over lambda for Emax for this oxidized surface. So I guess it's useful to know that work function energy is Hc over lambda, not your threshold wavelength. So if I have this work function energy increase, it means that my lambda naught decreases. So this lambda naught is going to decrease. If lambda naught decrease, since I'm plotting 1 over lambda naught, 1 over lambda naught will increase. Okay, I repeat. Uh. Work function increase. If this work function increase, lambda naught will decrease. If lambda naught decrease, this denominator is smaller. Then 1 over a smaller number is a bigger number. Okay, so this 1 over lambda naught will increase. You'll be somewhere, I don't know, la, anywhere la, here. La. They didn't give us value, so it doesn't matter. As long as the intercept is greater than 2.2. And the second property that we should know is that the gradient has to be parallel. So something like this. Okay, how do I know it's parallel? Because gradient is equal to Hc, and Hc is a constant. Okay, so the two mark here would be number one, um, same gradient as the initial line, and the second mark, so this is B1. The second B1 would be greater x intercept. As long as it's greater than 2.2, can already. It can be any number that is greater than. All right. 
So I find photoelectric effect question fairly nice and easy to do. No jump scare, no strange things, as long as you study the experiment and understand the phenomena.